Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's continue this complete beginner's guide to Valheim. And I want to just say, number one, thank you so much to the Valheim community, everybody who's been watching my videos and giving me comments. It's so helpful. The community is great, and everyone on the tutorial video episode one, thank you for your feedback. One thing I want to clarify, number one, this is just something I noticed. You don't have to actually have to sit down to get the rested buff. You can just be in your shelter by a fire and get that. Another thing is, um, when we looked at the log for active effects, okay, the rested buff does not tell you that you also get a 50% experience bonus, but you do. So you're getting 50% more experience while you're rested. So that's tremendous. All right. So there's a lot of things that we need to work out right now. But number one, let's just talk about basic maintenance. Always make sure you have food going. You can see our food is petering out. Make sure you have your rested buff. So I'm just going to eat even before the timer winds down on my berries. And before you go out doing stuff, go to your workbench and just make sure you click that repair hammer to fix all your stuff. So you're good to go. And let's go out and have some fun. So uh, right now, I do want to talk to you about making our house a little bit bigger, using the hoe, okay, to level the terrain, and just generally exploring branching out a little further from this area, looking at the map, finding new things to fight, getting new resources, exploring what's possible. Now, I want to make a hoe, so we're going to need some wood to do that. We've made the hammer, the club, the axe, and we can also make arrows, okay? Now, we don't know how to make um, a bow yet because we haven't found the items that trigger that recipe in our memory. So we need to do that. So I'm just going to go out and wander around. And what I like to do is notice the map. You see how I'm here on the map, and I kind of like to just start making some circles around to explore the map, but keeping in a very, very close radius to uh, the stones for now, so I can always get home if I need to. I'm just going to chop down this beech tree, and I'm going to be careful. You'll notice, of course, that my skills are leveling up, and our stone tools break relatively quickly. All right. And I'm just going to hold this down. And I want to just be careful because I don't want it to fall on me. And just kind of watch where it falls. And it's fallen in there. And that's great. Now, you see how we have this log over here? I want to show you something else. If you push the middle mouse button, you do kind of a special attack with the axe. And it's called the secondary attack. They just actually added this recently at least of the, uh, when I recorded this video. And this is a great way to get a downward strike. You see when you're using the axe, you kind of chop at an angle. And sometimes it's hard to hit things that are right below your feet. So if you use the secondary attack, you get a nice straight down chop. So it um, targets that area better. Now I'm going to put my tool away. I'm going to run back to the tool bench because or the workbench rather, and I'm going to just repair my axe, and let's go ahead and make the hoe. We can craft this up, and boom. We learned some new stuff, but I have to get out of this immediately because there's a guy coming. And no problem. I took a hit from him, but that's okay. And we got his resin. And, oh, look, Hugin wants to talk to us, so let's go talk to him. You have crafted a hoe. This tool is used for landscaping. You could say it is the perfect complement to the hammer, which builds. Use it to clear the ground and manipulate the terrain. It's easier to create buildings on level ground, and it is. Now, I'm going to show you how to use the hoe, and I want to expand our house, and it's a good idea to do so on level ground. But, in general, when you want to level ground for a building, it's always easier to level the ground before you build, instead of trying to retroactively raise or lower the ground around a existing structure, because it just is doesn't work the way that you want. You either break your building or it doesn't level it out right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my hammer, okay? I'm going to right click, go to just the repair screen, and I'm just going to break this with the middle mouse button. Remember, we get full resources back, so no problem. I'm going to break this roof as well, okay? And I'm going to break um, 
No, that's good. That's enough breaking. All right. Now, if I were to push five and use my hoe, you can right click the hoe to open up different options. The default is level ground, but you can also raise the ground. OK, if you want, it requires some stone to kind of pack the ground with stone to raise it. Or you can make roads. OK, um, just to mark area, prevent grass uh, from growing. But I'm going to go ahead and level the ground. All right. Now, what it does, I'll show you. I'm going to go someplace else first. You have to be within the radius of your workbench to do this. And it levels the ground as much as possible to the level that you're standing on. So if I click right here, if I left click, it's going to try to make the ground the same level that I'm standing on. But there are some limits. It, it won't just build up ground out of nowhere. Okay, and you'll notice it destroys the grass. But now, if I use this all around, I can kind of flatten out the area where I'm standing. All right? And it only works gradually, like I said, like over a precipitous drop-off. It's not going to work anymore. But here, I've been able to kind of just level the terrain a bit. And you see how we're at the edge of this kind of a uh, little bit of a hill here, it's not going to level that off. It's not going to just like destroy that, right? We're going to have to chew that away eventually. But after doing all of this, I've leveled the ground to the best that it was possible to the area that I'm standing on. So this is a nice flat area. Now I could try and just tease this out a little bit more to make a better flat ground, but I don't want to because I want to level this. Now watch this. Watch what happens if I try to level the ground um, to where I'm standing here and bring it up. Okay? So I'm doing it, and I'm doing it under the house, and it's sort of working. All right? Now you see how you have the grass poking up through there? You can come over here if you want and level the ground underneath your home from outside to get rid of the grass poking through just if you want that kind of clean look. I'm going to stand back here and I'm going to try to level uh, the, terrain, the terrain all the way around my house just to make it so that there is no grass. But you'll notice how if I do it and I'm on fire, I've walked in my fire. Oh, my sweet Moses. I almost died. Got to watch out for your fire. Hilarious. I do that all the time. But what I wanted to show you is um, you see my chest. You see how it got buried there? That's the consequence of retroactively raising and lowering the ground, is that you might get a situation where, yes, it's level, but, <laughs> you know, um, you got more than you bargained for. So all you have to do is go to your hammer. I'm going to open my, I'm going to put my hammer away. I'm going to open it. Look, we put a torch, 12 seeds, and seven dandelions. I'm going to show you something. If you don't like that, and you just use this, your hammer, to destroy the chest, you get all of the wood back for the chest, but you also, if I go into my inventory, I got everything that was in the chest. So you'll never lose anything in the chest. I'm gonna go ahead and select the hoe, and I'm gonna actually raise the ground even more right over here. And now I'm going to build my house on the other side where I've leveled it out. And I'm just gonna extend this and make it a long house, okay? So I'm gonna go to the hammer, I'm gonna go to building, and I'm just going to kind of map out a house that I want and make it nice and long like this. And I think this will be just a little bit better. I'm going to go to my hoe and I'm going to kind of just work back. Remember that area that I just built? I could just undo that. This takes no resources to level the ground, by the way. It just takes some stamina. It takes five per hit. Just get this away. Now, I will tell you while we're building, do not get too wild when you're building your house because um, if you try to make a house that's too built big, you might run into structural challenges. Oh, this is not in the right place. Break that and build it there. There we go. There we go. There's a floor. What I mean is if like you try to make a giant house, the roof might not get supported the way that you want because it's just too big. So don't get wild. Now you can build supports and make it fine if you want, but it's a little bit harder to get a construction like that maintained. So all I'm doing is um, I'm going to build like a house that kind of goes out to here. It's just a traditional Viking longhouse for myself. And I'm going to rotate the wall 
and I'm going to snap it in place like that. And then I'm going to kind of rotate this wall. Just build this all the way around like that. There we go. And we're out of wood. But we're starting to frame ourselves a nice new house. Okay, I'm going to run over here. And before it gets dark, let's get some more wood. But luckily, we have this these logs that are on the ground. And if you do the super chop on these, you'll find that you get through these pretty reasonably. And they're super easy to hit. Our berries are already going to wear out, so I'm just going to eat. And I'm going to just hold down that middle mouse button and chomp straight down like this on this log. All right, and we got a bunch of wood. I'm going to put the axe away, and I'm going to go over here. Now, just a tip. You'll notice that I'm not getting the rested buff, and I'm about to lose it. If I go into the building menu, and I just build a roof at 45 degrees, okay? And I snap it over my door to kind of just fit next to that like that. All right. And I put it over here as well like that. Okay. I'm getting the rested bonus right now, even though my house isn't done. Even though I have this huge, like, exposed wall, all you need is a completed roof over you and proximity to the fire, okay? And you're going to be doing just fine, all right? So I'm going to stand here until we get our rested bonus. Now, the fire right now is outside, but we're going to, in this video, while we're just kind of working on some basic house maintenance, I'm going to build this a fireplace onto our house, okay? And we got the full rested bonus. And I'm actually going to build it right here. So I'm going to go to my hammer. I'm going to break this, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put a piece of flooring because I want to put a fireplace here. So I'm just going to build walls, and I'm going to start to, like, frame out a chimney, okay? The reason you need to do this is because you're going to want a fire in your house, but you don't want the effects of a fire in your house, which is smoke. You get a nasty debuff from smoke inhalation, and you don't want it. You want to have a cozy home, okay? So I'm just going to kind of build a little bit of a chamber like this. I'm stacking up the wood, you see? All right? And then I want this covered. So I'm going to kind of walk back here, and I'm going to build a roof um, on top. But we can't because we need wood, so I'm going to push R. I'm just going to run out into the woods and find a good place. Where did I chop that tree before? Well, I was mapping. It's right here. You see how it's leaning over? So this tree will be easier for us to cut down because it's already almost fallen. Stand here and chop at it like this. Bam. And we got the dream effect. Look at that. Three trees fell down. Uh, we actually killed an enemy somehow in that mess, and beautiful. So you can do some really skillful lumberjacking, and I use the word skillful as a joke. It's usually more like luck, but if, if you plant it around trees that already exist, you can have fun stuff like that happen, and it's just beautiful. Now, this is not beautiful. This log rolled down and hit our home. So how hilarious is that? Now, all you have to do... Um, I'm going to jump over this and just get rid of this with some chops. Stop it. Stop breaking my house. You'll have this happen while there's trees near your home sometimes, is that you'll damage your house. And that's okay, because... Oh boy. There we go. All you have to do is go to your hammer and right-click, select repair, and if our house did get damaged, you just left click on it. And it only got slightly damaged. And you just repair it. It takes no resources, just stamina. Now when you're chopping this log by your house, make sure you don't actually chop your house as well, because that's a no-no. Alright, there we go. We got all that wood taken care of. And now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to get my hammer, and I'm going to build... Oh, there's a guy here. Never mind, I'm going to get my axe. And we got to take care of this guy. Okay, and I'm going to get my hammer, and I'm going to build a roof. Okay, and I'm going to put the roof up here. But I want to snap it to the top, kind of. I'm going to just rotate it until it goes all the way around. And if I cannot get up to the top where I want to be able to build this roof, okay, 
then all I have to do is build myself a ladder. I'm gonna build a ladder like this, and I'm gonna walk on the ladder. And this is like a scaffolding for building, all right? And I'm gonna switch over to the roof that I want, and I want this roof to be on top of my chimney, like that at an angle, so that the, the smoke just vents out of my house, but it's covered so the rain doesn't fall onto my fire. And then once I'm done with my ladder, I just push the middle mouse button to destroy it, okay? And then now I've got myself um, a little bit of a chimney situation, okay? And I'm actually going to you know, build um, a roof like this all the way around. And we need to build walls to kind of close this in. All right. And... Oh, looks like... Wait a minute, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, snap this on the end. There you go. Okay, and then put the roof up here, like this, and this, and then we need corner roofs up here, like that, and up here, like that. Now we have our house completely roofed in, and all we need to do is go to this, and I'm going to go to Misk, and I'm going to build a campfire right inside my house, right there. Now, I have a fire in my home, in a fireplace, and it's venting the smoke out of my home. So I have a really cozy shack. How about that? Now, if you don't want to play at night, which you probably don't, close your door. You don't have to. I just like to do that. And then just write, um, interact with your bed and sleep, and you'll just sleep to the next day. So you can play in the daylight with less enemies and better lighting for the game experience overall. All right, so we've rested and we're ready to go. Let's open the door. Uh, but look, I'm not going to leave until I get my rested bonus, okay? There we go. 11 minutes of joy. Okay, so at this point, we've talked about expanding our home and building a fireplace. We did that. We leveled the ground. And now it's time with uh, crafting to look at our workbench and, you know, start seeing what's possible. So I'm going to go here. You know what, first of all, um, I need really badly right here, uh, because it's so dark, is I need to just go ahead and build myself, uh, repair all my stuff, right? And we want, mm, no, we have all of that. I don't want to make arrows yet. Let's talk about building, and let's talk about, I'm going to put a torch right here, just to give myself a little light. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about these standing torches is all you have to do is walk up to them and you can, it says, tells you how much fuel it has. It starts with two out of four. And you can push E to just add resin to it. So you see how I have seven resin in my inventory. I can just fuel it up and it will run out of fire. Um, but standing torches are nice for just illumination. Now, they don't really scare off these guys. These guys will still come mess with you even with standing torches. They are scared, though, if you're holding your torch. So you can have them run away, you know, chase them away with that if you want. All right, now I'm going to talk about um, what you want to do if you want to ever expand your base, which of course you want to do, and expand your possibilities. You need to build everything in this crafting tab. So we don't have a cooking station yet. And let's build a cooking station. Now I'm going to build a couple of these. You can build a cooking station and you have to build it over top of a fireplace for it to work a, or a campfire rather um so you can build one like you can have a spit that's just out here to cook on but also i can cook inside and you can fit more than one of these things over a fire okay um so you can kind of arrange this to get the benefit of lots of cooking stations if you want all right so what I'm going to do is just going to kind of have one here and uh, one here, here, and there. I'm going to build four cooking stations so I can be cooking. Um, each cooking station has two units on it that it can hold. 
So you could cook eight things at once right there if you are interested. Plus, I have this out here. I just think they look good. They don't take a lot of wood. You don't have to build that many, of course. Um, and you can even build more than that if you like. But that's just what I'm going to do. All right. Now, at this point, we've got an axe. We've got a hoe. We've got a backup torch. Uh, you know what I need. Oh, yes. It's time to eat, first of all. It said you can eat another bite, and we have to eat because we're going to go do some lumberjacking. I'm just going to chop this tree. Just give it a bunch of chops. Okay. Until it's all gone. And so we can get a whole bunch of wood. And we did. Great. Great, great, great. Now look at all this wood we've got over here. Now, sometimes what I like to do is just ram them up against each other so you can try to stand in a place where you can hit two logs at once. This is not that, unfortunately. And I just got hit by my own rolling log. So you got to be careful of that. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but early in the game, you don't have very much health. Now, boy, we've got quite a configuration of logs going here. Here we go. Now we're just hitting a bunch of stuff at once. You see how easy that was because the logs had rammed into each other. So now I'm just going to pick up all of that wood, and I'm going to put my axe away. I'm going to run back. If you want your comfort level to increase inside your home, you get different ratings of comfort for certain items that you build. So if you go to your hammer and you go to furniture, usually furniture boosts your comfort. Now the chest doesn't. It's just a convenient thing to have. And I'm going to just put a chest over here in the corner. Okay. And I'm going to show you a little chest trick. So with a chest, what you can do if you want um, is go ahead and uh, put a wood floor right above the chest like this. So I'm just going to use a wood floor one by one. Now, you have to um, use shift to kind of unsnap it. And then you can just attach it to the wall, and it's like a shelf that just pro projects from the wall. And that provides enough stability so that you can go to furniture and you can build another chest right on top of it. And so this is what a lot of Valheim players do, is that they just have chests that are stacked up to save space, right? And I'm going to actually, you can even then at this point, once you've built this, um, you can go here to the hammer so you can see better, and you can destroy that shelf in the middle get your wood back and now you have chests that are stacked up you can't interact with your chest unless your hammer's away you push e and i'm going to throw in you know just random stuff that i don't really need to be carrying around at the moment feathers um dandelions beech seeds things like that okay now we've got two chests in our home our comfort did not go up um from chests but the bed the fire uh, all of that has helped boost our comfort, and you always want to come back and just check to see if you can build anything else that will boost your comfort level, okay? So, at this point, we've built everything that we want to build, and so we need to go get ideas from the environment to get new things that we can craft, okay? So, I'm going to go over this way. I'm going to look at the map. Remember how I said I like to kind of explore in... Just a circular fashion to uncover things and obviously while i'm walking around i'm just going to gather everything and there's a pig there's two pigs right over there there's boar now you see that um yellow alarm bell above the boar what that means is the boar doesn't know that we're there but it's heard us so it's kind of aware that something's out there but it doesn't know we're there now if you push control you can crouch down into like sneak mode you see how i'm kind of like stealthing around and then there's a little eyeball that's above you that will um, indicate whether or not the enemy detects you. Now, I'm not going to even worry about stealthing up on um, this prey at the moment. But if you do sneak up on anything in this game and you attack it while it's unawares, you get a sneak attack bonus to your damage. Which, if you look at, for example, um, something like this... The stone axe, you see how it has a three times backstab modifier at the bottom? That is the sneak attack, the backstab that you'll get if you can kill it while you're stealthing and it doesn't know you're there. Now you see how 
Um, the, I'm just leveling up sneak like tremendously right now. And oh, there's a boar. It, you see how it has one star on it? Okay. That means that this boar will give you double the drops of a normal boar, but that it's going to be harder than a normal boar. And you can see two star, you can see on up. So, um, you can see regular boar, which is no star, one star, which is like elite, and then two stars, which is like, you know, boar champion. And this is for all creatures that you encounter. Now, boars, um, are going to be animals that like just, they're foraging around, they're doing things. And um, it sees me, and boars are territorial. So, like, if a boar um, s detects you, and it might very well just want to run at you and fight you. In fact, usually they will. Okay? So, I want to fight a boar, I do, but I don't really want to fight a one star boar at the moment. Okay? But you could take it, perhaps. If you want to fight something, Make sure you're at full stamina, because every swing of your weapon will take stamina. And make sure you have a favorable situation. Don't fight, like, 50 boars at once, all right? So I'm going to kind of um, crouch down. And I've also found deer. So you see these deer over here? Now, deer are not hostile. They will run away if you get close to them and they detect you. So they're actually very hard to hunt early in the game because, um, now notice that when you move with stealth, you are using your stamina. Okay, I killed it because I backstabbed it. So it, the eyeball, you see how it's open? If the eyeball is open, that means things detect you. And if it's closed, that means they do not detect you. Now, we killed a deer with the backstab and we got lucky. It didn't detect us, it ran away. We're not very good at sneaking, but sneaking is really easy to level up. As long as something is nearby and you're sneaking around, you will just level this skill up, okay? So you could kind of just skirt around enemies and use this to level up. Now deer, I'm going to show you, we got deer meat and we got deer hide, okay? And let's go to the log and let's go here and down all the way at the bottom, you can see that we learned how to um, make a deer rug, okay, out of the deer hide that we've acquired so far. So, some new recipes coming on. Now, deer, what happens is they'll run away, and they will generally eventually return back to the place where you found them. So, if you scare them away and you want to hunt deer, just wait a bit and let them come back and try to sneak up on them. Early in the game, we don't have a bow yet to use with our arrows, so these are hard to hunt. Um, but you can kind of like hide in the grass and try to sneak up. At, at the very least, what you'll do is you'll raise your sneaking skill. Oh man, we didn't kill it. That's a shame. So we tried, and it's wounded, it's gonna run away. Now in the meantime, let's see if I can kill a boar. All right, it detected us at the last second, but we killed it. Boar are pretty easy. Now check this out. You saw all these recipes that are happening? Now we're really getting someplace, okay? Because we got a boar hide. All right, now my food is running out. Uh, I only had two minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and eat to make sure I don't run out while I'm fighting. All right, now here's a boar right here, and you see how this boar is, like, charging me. It wants to just come attack me. It hit me, and it hit me pretty good. But with some... It, they don't take that many swings with your stone axe, so they're not that terrifying. You could, in fact, just run headlong into just a single boar if you wanted to take it out. Um, but I like to be cautious. Now, you see this deer over here? It is back, and it has full health. So I don't know if that's the same deer that we hit or another deer. You'll learn the sound effects in this game as you play. But if you play with the sound pretty high, you can hear, like, the deer make this sound when they are afraid and they run away from you. It almost sounds to me like a dog barking or something like that. I, I don't know. Or a dog whimpering. It's, a, it's an odd noise. 
Um, it's a deer noise. And if you hear that, you know that you've stumbled across a deer and it's just been alerted to your presence and it ran away. All right, there we go. We got the deer. And you see, sometimes you have to wait for a moment for the resources to pop out and we got it. So now we have a little bit of resources, okay? And I'm going to still hunt because uh, we have a rested buff. But I'm going to show you something. Ooh, there's some boar meat. I didn't pick that up before. Always, always, always look for the sparklies. Everything that you can pick up in this game will sparkle on the ground. And that means pick it up. Now, I have a habit of leaving things behind, and it's a shame. Don't be like me. Pick up everything. Don't let anything go to waste. Now, um, here's a bunch of boar, okay? I'm going to push M for the map, and I'm going to zoom in on the map with the mouse wheel, and you can see this yellow arrow is me on the map. You see how the, the stones, the sacrificial stones, are marked on the map? I'm uncovering it as I explore. And here's my bed, which is my spawn point now where I've rested. And I'm going to um, mark the map. I'm going to use over here on the right. There are different icons you can place or pins you can put on the map. And I'm, you just select the one that you want. I'm going to select this dot. And I'm going to just double click to put down a pin. And then you can type something. And I'm going to type boar right here. Because I'm just going to get in the habit of marking things that I want to know about on the map. So this way I know that boar tend to congregate here. Like even if I kill all of these... Perhaps in, in a day or a couple of days, the boar will respawn here. And this is a good hunting ground for boar, boar potentially. If it's not, you can always right-click to remove the pin, or you can put an X through it by just single-clicking on it, or just click it again um, to like mark that it's not working anymore for you. But anyway, I've marked that up. I'm going to go try to fight a boar. And this boar is like walking right at me. And it sees me, so there's nothing to do except fight. Now, this was the one-star boar, and okay, it was easy. Um, luckily, we wrecked it, and we got, on top of the normal stuff, we also got a boar trophy. Okay, I kind of overestimated how hard that would be. I've been annihilated by enemies with a star or two in this game because they are tend to be a significant jump in difficulty, but luckily, boar are pretty reasonable, even at with a star so that just took three swipes now luckily it didn't hit me but we got it i'm gonna get this wood because it's here and we're gonna return home and we have a lot to talk about all right so i'm gonna go back i'm gonna put my axe away and i'm gonna run home there's a deer right there uh so you are gonna need a ton of deer and boar especially early in the game, to make things for yourself. That deer saw us right away. It was not tricked. So let's talk about what, what can we make. Well, we got a bunch of new recipes, and you could go to the log to find them. Oh, there's a jerk over here. I got to get rid of this guy. He's just strutting into my territory. Now, you'll notice how he had the yellow uh, alarm indicator. He heard me, but he actually didn't know I was there. So I, like, un got some unaware swings on him. Now... I'm going to go into my home. I'm going to just... Uh, I don't like the way that the ground interacts with my staircase. I'm going to try to raise it up by my stairs. But if I do this, I might destroy my fireplace. I don't know. I'm going to just move over here and just try to raise it up so that... There we go. Um, it doesn't look as good. My stairs are kind of buried. But I don't know if you noticed before, but I couldn't just smoothly walk onto my stairs. I had to jump. That's just not how I want to get into my house. All right. Now, while I'm resting, we got a bunch of new recipes because we got new items that jarred our memory. So we got um, deer hide, we got deer meat, we got boar meat, and we got leather scraps. So all of this adds up to a new world of possibilities for us. Now, this deer or boar trophy that we got, rather, these items are okay and you can use them as decoration, but not for a while. And so whenever you get trophies, they're kind of heavy. I would just put them in a chest and just leave them there for now. You don't need to carry them around. All right. Now, you can always look at the log to see like what recipes you just got, you know, um, when you got the new items or what you can do 
is you can bust out your hammer and just right click and just look around at your tabs and see if there's anything new. And yep, we can build a raft, which is new, so we can sail around if we want. And we can build a deerskin rug, okay? Um, so that's also new. Now the deer rug, if we build this, it will give us an extra comfort in our home, which will give us an extra minute of rested buff, which is, you know, great. But right now, I'm going to save my deer hide for something else. But I want to talk to you about cooking, because we only have one food buff, and food is going to be essential for us. So you see how we have these cooking stations that I built above our campfire inside our home? And it says E, cook item. If you push E, you just pull out an item that's ap applicable from your inventory and throw it on the spit. And so I'm just cooking every piece of meat that I found. And you see how they're just cooking away. I first put my boar meat, then I put my deer meat. I'm pretty sure it goes from top to bottom, left to right when selecting items. But when you're cooking, this is something critical. You got to pay attention. It sizzles when you put it on there. And you see how it sizzled? Is it, when it sizzles again, you have to click on, you have to use E to pull it off. Or it will burn and you will waste your meat. So once you hear it sizzle again, push E and take it off. You kind of have to babysit your cooking in this game. Otherwise, your meat will char and you're going to end up with coal, which is a disaster. Because look at this. Cooked boar meat gives me 30 health and 10 stamina for 20 minutes. And cooked deer meat gives me 35 health and 12 stamina for 20 minutes. So I'm going to just show you that these are red forks. Remember, the red fork means that they give you more health than anything else. And these will add on to the raspberry buff that I currently have. So with if I eat this deer meat, 30 health, 10 stamina, or I mean, that was the boar meat, and I eat the deer meat, 35 health, 12 stamina, look at down here at the bottom left at my food bar. You see how all three of these buffs are in play, and look at my health. Look how high my health has gone at this point. I have um, increased it dramatically. I've basically tripled it, okay, uh, with cooking. Now, do I have any other items to cook? I don't. But when you cook, just understand that it's a active thing that you have to do. And time does not pause when you're in your inventory. I've burned so much meat in this game, getting distracted. It doesn't pause when you're at the workbench. You need to just take the time to focus while you're cooking so you don't burn your meat. Now, meat that you cook in this game never goes bad, so you don't have to worry about your food spoiling, okay? So that's great. Now I'm going to come outside. You'll notice that it's dark, uh, so I'm going to go to my workbench, and I'm going to use this. I'm going to repair my stuff, and I'm going to go to, what can I craft now? Look at this. Now I can make a wood shield for myself. I can make a rag tunic, rag pants, and I can make a bow. And all you have to do is click on this to see what it takes. So if I want to make, um, you know, I already have a rag tunic, so I don't need another one of those. But if I want to make pants, I'm going to need five leather scraps. And this will give me a bonus armor. Right now I only have one armor. It's very embarrassing. Um, I can make a shield if I want to be able to parry attacks. So that's really nice. Um, but right now my priority would be uh, I want a bow and I want pants. So I'm going to need to save up leather scraps to do that. So you just kind of make a mental note of like what you need. Now, um, additionally, I can't build anything else new here, so I'm just going to run over here. I can hear some stuff rustling around. It's the night. There's no reason to get wild. I'm going to just click on this, close the door, and I'm going to go to sleep. Now, when you sleep, it does not kill your food buff. So check this out. Like, I'm going to wake up, and it's not like I'm going to have lost all my food. The food buff is a reflection of... Uh, game time uh, I'm sorry real life time not you know time of day in the game so I lost my raspberry buff but that was fading when I was going to sleep so now I have 18 minutes left on both of my deer meat you see how the cooked food like last twice as long so this is why you want to go hunting often so you can get as many food buffs as you can and you could start to get the items that you need to craft yourself armor better weapons uh, and some other things in your home. Now, right now, to be honest, uh, there isn't anything I can make out of um, deer because I don't have um, 
any more technology. So if I wanted to, because I'm going to be hunting deer a lot, and I wanted to have more time on my rested buff, why not then just build ourselves a nice deerskin rug, okay? And we can put it like right here so when you come into our home, um, and when you get out of bed, you have a little rug. It makes it homier. Now watch this. Comfort 4. If I put this down, okay, and I... Uh, let it go. You see how we went up to comfort five and our rested buff went to 12 minutes. So now we have a really nice homey space to kind of take shelter in in this horribly hostile world that we found ourselves in. Now, the final thing I want to show you, I'm going to run over to where we were. I'll get out my torch. It's still, um, you know, the early part of the dawn. If you noticed when I was hunting the boar, okay, there's a stone over here that has red glyphs on it, like the sacrificial stone. By the way, this boar is back, and it's going to run at us and fight us, which is good. You don't want your torch out when you're fighting boar, because you want them to come to you so you can kill them. With our food, they are not a threat at all. We have so much health, we can just blast them. This is a rune stone, and if you click on it, you get this bit of lore text here, okay, um, about boar, and you'll notice that it added to the compendium um, information about the boar right here. Now, boars um, are something that you can actually uh, tame. It says right here they fear fire and the hand of man, but they can be taught to obey it. Um, but taming boar is not something that you'll get to for quite a while and is not even strictly necessary, uh, but it's just something you can do if you want to have like a pig farm or something like that later in the game, okay? Now, all we want to do now is be, you know, just hunting boar, and I'm just running at this boar, and you'll notice I have so much more stamina because of our food that I can afford to just run and swing my axe wildly like a mad person um, to hunt boar. Now, deer, unfortunately, we can't do that because they're too skittish, and they'll usually outrun you, even if you're sprinting. So deer are much more elusive, but that's okay, because we need boar anyway uh, to make our armor and our shield and our bow. So everyone, uh, we've learned how to expand our home. We've cooked, we've leveled the ground, we built a fireplace, and we are really doing fantastic work beginning our lives as a stranded Viking here in Valheim. I hope you're finding this guide to be useful, and I hope you have an excellent day. I hope you're enjoying the game. Take care, everybody.